Hello, this is Eli over at Medicine Talk Pro, and this video is how to create your email. So how to put your newsletter into an email, which is known as a campaign here in Constant Contact. So I'm just going to log in here to Constant Contact, and you will likely end up at this page here. And if you've watched the first video, you've already added contacts, you have a list, you've set up your settings. And so now you're ready to create your first newsletter. And so there's this big orange button here that says create. Now, and then you can choose email from the list here. Now this is going to bring us to this page here. And I have to tell you a few things about this. So if you've recently signed up to Constant Contact or you've been a client of theirs for a while, and have recently signed up to the newsletter, you probably do not have access to what's called the Generation 2 Editor. With that editor, you were able to take HTML code that we send out every month that has the content of the newsletter, copy and paste it, and you're done and you're ready to go. They've made some changes, and so this video tutorial is for people who are brand new to Constant Contact or brand new to working with us, but you're in the new generation editor. So when you come here, you're going to see, you won't see some things on your screen that are on my screen. So you will not see view legacy templates and you will not, you may see custom code, but you won't see view legacy templates. And because you don't, I'm going to show you how you use the new editor. The next video, right, creating your newsletter with the old style editor, you, won't, you might want to watch that one for sure because there is a way for you to have access to that quick seven minute newsletter. This one takes quite a bit longer. So here I am. You'll see a tab here and you'll see the selection of templates you can choose from. So I'm going to select this blank template actually because we've found that that is one of the best ways to accomplish what I'm getting ready to show you. One of the first things that I want to do is I'd like to see my header here at the top. So before I start doing any confusing things, I'm going to show you here how do I get my clinic header or logo. Now I can upload a file, which, right, that would be from your computer, your own header. I already have one. I'll just click on this to show you that it opens up this box where you click on your right here, browse your computer to upload, and then you just go and select your image from there. Now it gives you some information here, right? It says no bigger than five megabytes and it should not really be wider than 800 pixels or it's going to compress it and that might make it look different than what you would like it to be so i'll let you navigate and find your own header i'm going to use mine which is right here and once i click on the left these are all my images when i click on the left it pops up here in the box and i can click insert now, this isn't as big as I'd like it, so I'm going to hover over it, and I get this little blue arrow right here, and I can drag that so that it is wider and bigger. So there's my header, and I'll click Done. Now, I'm going to bring some text boxes over here. So I'm going to bring one here, and you'll see a pink line right there when I have it positioned right under that box. And that text box will now let me put whatever I want in there, which I'm going to show you in a minute what we're going to put there. But we need a couple of these. So I'm going to drag another one over. One, two, let's do three, because I'm going to show you three sections. And then from there, you should be able to figure out the rest. The other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to divide these boxes. So I grabbed the divider on the left, and I'm going to put a divider in here. Right, and I'm also going to put a divider up here at the top. And 
I'd like an image in here. So I'm going to put one image there and I'm going to put one image over here on the right and I'm going to put an image over here on the left. So now I've put three boxes in here and now I can actually paste some text and get a picture in here. So you'll want to open up your email that you got your articles with. Let me just go over here and come to 2018 and I'm going to take March's information and these emails come attached to your or these files come attached to your email and you'll notice that there's uh, one here that says HTML code which in the video I'm going over right now you cannot use it doesn't work so instead I'm going to open up these I'm going to open up three of these hex boxes so the feature article the food article and the herb that's what I'm going to show you and I'm going to hit enter right there this top link here that says HTML code but it ends in HTML that is a file that you do not receive instead you have an email that comes to your email box with the already formatted newsletter right this is our formatting and we send it to you so you can see what it looks like and some people just forward that email on to her to their clients but the reason I open this is because I'm going to want to access a couple of things in here and put them into my newsletter and I'll show you what they are so I'm, I'm just going to open that up and that way I'll show you what I'm doing as I do it so the first article I've opened up is my feature article right here on PCOS now what you'll notice in all of these text documents is an image link and then the article itself and then the resources what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab just the text, not the image link, and not the ref resources or references, and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back over here, and in this box right here, I'm going to highlight the text that's in there. I'm going to delete it, and then I'm going to paste what I just copied. I'm going to bold this top line. Now, the benefit once you see the next video in this series of using the HTML editor is that there's a little HTML HTML button that lets you paste in the code we've written so that you don't have to do this article by article that's very time consuming but for those of you who don't have access to that old editor this is really the only way you can do it now I know because I'm one of the medical reviewers for the newsletter that this list is bulleted but if you weren't sure what it should look like, you can simply go to that email we sent and you can see how it was formatted. So I know that that has bullet points. I know that the next two headers are bolded right here. So I can bold that and I kind of like there not being a space there. So I'm just going to leave it. And then I know that this was a bullet item. So I'll put my cursor there and hit bullet, put my cursor there and hit bullet. Now I know I'm going to need to put my references link in here and maybe you don't want to but I think it is good practice to let people see where you got your information from so I'm going to make this a hyperlink and here in the formatted version we send you or uh, we are making a change to the files in that we're going to include this link to references I'm just going to right click on that and copy the link address. And then I can come back here, I can highlight references, and then I can insert a link, and it's a web page link, and I'm going to paste it there. And then I'll just click insert. And so if someone's interested in going to look at the references, then they can come and click. Now, if you don't like the color of that link, you can change it. Most people are used to seeing a blue, so I'm going to change that to blue. There we go. The picture you can insert from the URL link that's right up here, the image link. So I'm going to come back to that text document that's attached to your email, go to the top. I'm only going to copy the URL that's right there and come back to the email I'm building. 
click on the picture, hit edit. It's going to bring you back to the library where you went to to get your logo. But instead of being on the library tab, I'm going to click the image URL tab, put my cursor in the box and paste that in. You can click preview to see what it looks like. Then I'll hit insert and there's my picture. So let me show you that again with the next article. So I'm going to do herb. And I'm going to just take that little bit. So feature articles always longer than the other articles. Those are short and sweet. So I have that there. I'll bold that. I'll go back. I'm doing this a little bit out of order. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in. Now I'll come here into my image and hit edit. Image URL paste, preview, what a beautiful plant that is, paste that in there, and then I'll look at the way it's formatted, which is, oh, I've opened the wrong one, this is, uh, let me come here, Chase Tree Chromium, here we go, so no, no bolding or bullets or anything in that, what you'll notice right away is that the references under each article is the exact same link. All right, so I'm hovering over that. These are March 2018. We just put the references link under each article because that's what our doctors asked us for. So you could actually, if you wanted to, put your references as one single link at the bottom. And let me show you how you could do that so you don't have to paste it in after every article. I would do something like this. Newsletter references. I would put that right there. And then I'm going to copy the link. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to copy it. And I can close it. And I'll come down here on the bottom and highlight that. And then I can just put in one link to the newsletter references for the entire newsletter. And then let's delete that. So I showed you both of those ways so that you had your choice. It's my preference to just have newsletter references at the end of my newsletter. I will say that if you're going to put this information online, remember, that you have to include your image attributions if you're putting it online. And a lot of people put their newsletter online. And so the way you can do the image attributions is to either put them here at the end. You could put image right here, attributions right there with a colon. And then in your email, we send you a link to image attributions. So you have the link in your email. I'm just going to come over here because I have it bookmarked. And here is where we have all the image attributions. So I would just copy these and I would put them all right there like that. And once I got them all pasted in, then I would format them so they were all the same text. So I'm just going to take two, right? So that I don't waste your time and copy, paste, copy, paste. So I have those in there. I would highlight that. I would turn it all to Arial, whatever, whatever font you want, whatever you're building. And I would make them small. And so they're all right there. And that way, when you put this up on an online, your website, your blog, however that is, then you've got them on here and you are protected. Okay, so that was, oh, I said, I told you I was going to show you three times, but I think you have the basic idea. But let me use this to show you that you could click in any box and you can delete. Anything you've put in there can be deleted. So what else do we do here? Well, you can put a text box here at the top. And you can put uh, your clinic information in here, contact information, and you can format it. So just like you do in any program, 
you could format this so it's centered and you can make it bigger and you can bold it right so all of this so my clinic information now I don't want it bolded I can come to 14 I'm going to unbold it and now I can put something like one two three four adventure avenue and I can put the city so Whiteville Whiteville Georgia Right, you get the basic idea. I want you to build Georgia and my phone number and two three two three four five. Uh, the website you can put that. You can put uh, an email address. This and so you've got your clinic information right there. I would always encourage you to make use of dividers because it helps people uh, see it. You could have another box up here what if you've got a special going on so let's put that in maybe you're going to do a special talk maybe you have special appointments you're offering so you can put your information now you've watched me as I I've just drug text boxes over and dividers over and things like that perhaps you want to put your social media right here now when you do this the first time you have to fill this information out so I put the social media bar here and I'm clicking on it and I'm clicking edit and it will open a box up here on the left where you can actually put in your Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. You can delete a social network if you don't have one. You can add other networks like Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, right? <clears throat> but you want to fill that information out. Now, if you build this, then next month you can simply copy it and you won't have to keep doing all this because it'll be there and I'll show you that at the end of the video so this is specials classes discounts etc and if you watched our newsletter strategies free webinar right it was a business Friday lunch called newsletter strategies <laughs> excuse me you saw where we said hey sell advertising space in your newsletter so maybe here's where you put your little ad so this is oh I deleted that by accident but <laughs> you get the gist right of what you can put there you have to make sure you have filled out all your settings because that shows up in the footer people have to have a way to unsubscribe so there's definitely that there and I, I wanted to show you that over here you can actually pick some different layouts so if you like that, let's put this here. If you like that picture on the side look with a lot with a column to the right of it, and you don't necessarily want your text to wrap, then you can pick up one of these layout boxes over here. Here's a coupon. So maybe you have a special coupon this month. So we can drop that coupon in there. And I'm going to put another divider. It's just me. I like to divide it up for people. And here may be where you put your advertisement for someone. And here may be where you say shop local. The, you know, George makes awesome gluten-free, toxin-free soap. And we just wanted to make sure to tell you all about it. That space right there is something that you can sell to someone. And the idea that they'll be getting to a very targeted market is often very appealing to people now if you click in this box or any of these boxes you can absolutely format so right here this edit highlight color so you can highlight things you can i mean there's just a lot of stuff that you can do now that's the link itself if i highlight this i can change the color of the text if I click outside the box, I get some settings over here and I can paint the background a color, any color I want. Let's turn it green. Now I show you that because when you see our formatted newsletter, you the what you're building in constant contact does not look like this because they, they don't give you that option to do this. This is why having our HTML code is so powerful. But you can copy this that 
of what comes in that HTML coded newsletter, you can copy that and you can create boxes in your own newsletter here, box by box, that duplicates that or doesn't duplicate it, but it comes close to looking like that. So if I wanted to do something like have this really cool what's new box, I would simply drop a box in. So here's where I would take a text box and I might put it here underneath the first article. And instead of putting a divider, maybe I'll color this. And I often encourage people to stick with the same kind of coloring throughout. Don't, you know, make your reader's eyes go crazy. And so here's a what's new. And so I can just paste, oops, sorry. I can just paste from here this what's new right here in my email. What I will say is that it's very good to use the same font. So if you're using Arial, stick with Arial. You can make it different sizes, but it's a good idea to stick with the same font. So what's new, and there you go. It's just an interesting thing. All of our information we supply is part of the theme of the newsletter. The other thing I would say is, and this is true for people who are using the old editor or the new editor, I would change this right here to have your name. So speak with Dr. Smith at your next visit about the approaches best suited to your symptoms and needs. And that way you can do some customizing of it. So that is the basics of building your newsletter with the new editor. You can preview it here. There's a button to preview it so that you'll see what it looks like. Right here, this is desktop, this is mobile, and the all of the templates and constant contact resize themselves so that they fit in the mobile the way they should. You can send a test email, and then you would just put the email address in here. It doesn't have to be an email address on your list. Here's a personal note. So if you have, say you have someone, a marketing person that looks over everything you send out before you do it, you could send it to them so that they can make comments to you or however you want to do it. And then we'll just come back to edit after you've previewed it. And now you can continue. And it's going to ask you again the list. So we're going to send this to monthly news, which has 100 people on it. I either can send it now or schedule it later. If I schedule it later, I can pick the date and the time. Here is where it's going to send your results. You can add an email address for them to send for to receive those early results at. Make sure you have your quick note, your from name, the from email address, all of this filled out, right? Um, as you get more and more into marketing, this A-B test means you can send two versions of an email out and see which one worked better. If you decide that you need to go back and make changes, uh, you can hit Save Changes and then reopen it. You can come right here and hit Edit. Always make sure to name it. So one thing I did not show you, let me cancel this and let me click Edit. This takes you back into the editor. So here at the top, if you click in this section right here, it's going to open up a box where the subject can be what you want it to be. So we'll say newsletter March 2018. This pre-header is information that's going to show up at the very top. Like when you get email in your inbox, it usually has the subject and then a few words of the first sentence behind that. Well, here in Constant Contact, you can actually say what that is. And so we'll just say PCOS naturally, dot, dot, dot. And then here you want to make sure and name it so no one but you sees this. And so this is March newsletter 2018. You have to be able to identify in your campaigns what was what so you know what to copy so you know what you've sent and i'll just hit save all right let's go back to the send so continue back to send however that works for you all that's filled out 
now I'm going to hit send now so that I can just hit send now. Uh oh, it says, hey, you need to provide additional information. I forgot to re-click what list it was going to. We'll start processing, re processing right away. Send now. It'll be sent shortly. So to wrap up this video, let me just come back to campaigns so that I can show you what I promised, which is you don't have to do all of that each month. That was the first one. So now you've got this one. It was sent and it was sent today. What I can do for next month, so April's newsletter, I log into Constant Contact. I come over here to Campaigns, click here. And the last one I sent will be at the top of the list. So I'm going to click More and I'm going to hit Copy. That's going to allow me, as you'll see when this opens up, a lot of my work is done for me. You have to rename it. So this is April Newsletter 2018. I'll hit Save. And so it's renamed. I'm going to start at the top. So you'll see all that stuff I did, right? Everything is there from the last month. So I don't have to do a lot of that formatting. So I will start at the top. I'll just change this to April. And then I don't remember what April's about, but let's say the back pane. I have no idea. I don't remember. And now I'll come down here. Nothing changes with my clinic information or my social media. Maybe I have a different coupon. So I'll click in there to edit it. Maybe I have a different advertisement for that month, or maybe I don't need that at all and I'll delete it. And then you simply have to open the text files from that next month. So that was March. Let's say that's April. Uh, that's all I have to do, right? You just have to open up the feature. We talked about depression, and here's everything you need, right? Um, there's your text, there's your image, and all you have to do here for constant or to change it is just click in the box. You can select all the text, right, and delete it and paste in the new text. And then you can click on the picture, replace it with a new, the new image URL, and the new picture will pop in. And then you can do that for each of the sections that you have uh, built in. Now, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, if you need any help, just reach out, let us know. We're over at customer service at medicinetalk.org. And I hope you enjoy sending your newsletter out to your patients and clients with constant contact. Thanks.